Hey y'all, hey, thank you for tuning back in to my channel. Um, I know that it's been quite a minute, just a little minute. Uh, please forgive me, there has been a lot going on. So, uh, yes, please forgive me. Um, anyhow, I wanted to talk about, just touch on a little bit about friendships. Um, something that God has put on my heart. Um, do y'all know that it is better to have a friend who tells you the truth in love than a lie out of fear? Like, seriously, it is better to have a friend who tells you the truth out of love than a lie out of fear. And what I mean by that is, if you have a friend and someone around you who is, you know, agreeing with everything that you're doing, everything that you're saying, or just, you know, not correcting you at all, even when you're wrong, just not correcting you, you know, you there's no growth there. There's no opportunity and a chance for you to actually grow as a person. There's no chance for you to grow uh, within your character, any of that, because that person is feeding the lies and, and keeping you stagnant, helping you to stay stagnant because they're not willing to tell you the truth in love. Um, which leads me to, I wanted to touch on um, scripture, Proverbs 27 and 5. Proverbs 27 and 5 said, better, says, better is open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted when the enemy multiplies kisses. Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend can be trusted when the enemy multiplies kisses. Now, um, I want to break it down just a little bit. What it is saying is, um, open, re open rebuke affords a person the chance to reflect on the course of the path he or she is walking. Where hidden love proceeds but fails to communicate the possibility of such a, such a need. The wounds of a friend are meant to cut to the heart for the good of the person, whereas the kiss of an enemy are devised to appease the heart in order to hide the hurt that has or is to come so sometimes we get so caught up in calling this person our friend we calling that person our friend and we don't even know the definition of friend we don't know um <clears throat> what a friend really is we think that oh this is my friend because they're agreeing or they're saying you know everything that i'm agreeing with and saying everything that i'm saying you know they don't, they're not correcting me. They're walking and saying the same way that I'm walking and saying. They're doing the same thing that I'm doing. So we're friends. Let's hang out. We cool. And that's how we consider, you know, typically our culture. That's how we kind of merge together of what we think or uh, perceive that friendship is. And that's not the case. A real friend is going to tell you we are wrong. A real, a real friend is going to tell you you're going down the wrong path. A real friend is going to correct you in love. Granted, there are some snakes there are some haters so you know per se but a real friend will tell you the truth in love and those are the friends you do not want to take advantage of those are the friends that you do not want to neglect that you do not want to take um for granted because those are the people who truly care about um your your um your whereabouts those are the true people who truly cares about um um let me see the person that you will be and not necessarily looking at it to who you are as right now um so i wanted to touch on also um some friendship that's that was in the bible that i thought was pretty you know i just named a few or whatever um but david and jonathan david and jonathan in like one samuel uh first samuel 18 says that um as soon as he had finished speaking to saul the saw um Saw of David, saw of Jonathan, excuse me, was knit to the soul. The soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Can you love your friend as your own soul? Like, if I have somebody around me in my group of circles, am I loving that person the way that I love myself, or am I just trying to, you know, be in competition, or am I just cool because we still doing the same thing, you know, we're walking the same path, we're in the same sin, so I'm not going to follow you with your sin because my sin is the same, so who am I to correct you? Um, and that's 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 tough because I've been there where you know this is my girl, this is my best friend, this is my friend, and it was only my friend or my best friend and my girl because we were both doing the same thing. We were both walking down that same dark path. We both was walking blindly, <laughs> the blind leading the blind. We both were walking towards something that we didn't even know where we were going. We both just 
walking. So you my girl because we ain't staying together. So that's something that um really take into accountability of who are you calling your friends. Are your friends growing with you? Are your friends trying to challenge you, encourage you, and lift you up? Or are they just cool with where you are because you are both on the same path and you're just walking blindly together? Um, another relationship was uh, Ruth. We all know about, we should know about Ruth and Naomi, um, which was, you know, Ruth was Naomi's uh, daughter-in-law. Um, but Ruth 1, 16 and 17 says, don't urge me, this is when she was, she didn't want to leave, uh, Naomi, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from where you, where you go, <clears throat> to turn back from you, where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Do you have, we need friends who will say, look, where you going, you know, you're down right now, I'm going to be down with you, I'm going to build you up and lift you up and pull you up, I'm not going to let you stay down here in your pity party, I'm going to pull you up out of that because you're better than that, or do you have friends that say, cool, you sit there in your pity party, I'm going to go on about my business and do what it is that I do, um, and you get back, you catch back up with me when you're feeling good, you don't need friends who's going to be there when it, when everything gets good, you need friends who's gonna be there for you thick and thin. Those are true friends. Um, and I also want to say this: um, don't just wish or pray for that type of friend, but be that type of friend. Don't just wish or pray for that type of friend, but also make sure that you are walking and that you are um, participating in molding yourself to be that type of friend as well. It's easy to just say, "Oh, I want." You know, I don't have any friends like that or, you know, I wish I had a friend like that. Are you that type of friend? Can you be that type of friend? Can you give off that type of love, that type of energy and plant that type of seed? So then by you being that type of friend, it may just uh, spill over to someone else trying to be that same friend as well. Um, and the best friendship that I personally, personally, of course, um, love is Christ and mankind, us. <laughs> So, um, John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than, th than this, that he laid out his life for his friends. So, the best friendship that you could ever have is a friendship with Christ. Um, Christ didn't just sacrifice um, his life for us, but he also made sure that he was being our friend in the moment. In the moments of, you know, when you're down and out, in the moments where you feel like there's no one else around, the moments where you're crying on the floor, you're feeling so alone, Christ is there to comfort you. Um, so Christ didn't just criticize and point out the flaws. He corrected, challenged, and encouraged those he called his friends, which is included us as well, um, for the best, for our best interest. He didn't just you know, he didn't just correct you. He didn't just criticize you. He didn't just throw all these darts at you and pointed out all your flaws. But he also encouraged you in the middle of that to say, get up, pick your head up. You're better than that. That's the type of friend that you need. You don't need a friend who's just going to point out your flaws, who's just going to criticize, who's just going to tell you all that you're doing wrong and all of who you are. But no, you need those friends who's going to speak into you to tell you who you are and where you're going as well. Um... So I think that's the best relationship that you could ever have. But I also wanted to say um, an intimate relationship and friendship with God will help you um, to be better in your friendships with others. So your vertical relationship and friendship with God will help your horizontal relationship and friendships around with, with others who are surrounded around you. You can't really have a good friendship or relationship with others if... Um, your re vertical relationship isn't growing with Christ, if you if you understand what I mean, um, because this is vertical and this is horizontal. Vertical is your relationship with you and God. Horizontal is your relationship with others and those surrounded around you. So if your relationship with God is kind of shaky and kind of off, guess how you're going to treat those who are surrounded around you? You're going to be mean. You're going to be bitter. You're going to be hurt because you're not allowing the vertical relationship to grow and strengthen to be healed from the one and only source who can do that, so that you're able to. Put off and put off um, positive uh, positive seeds and feelings or whatever around those who are your friends. So I also wanted to talk about First Corinthians 15.33. First Corinthians 15.33 says, do not be misled, bad company corrects good character. Yeah, do not be misled. Bad company corrects good character. And 
I converse in these speak on this because if you can get around that wrong group of people, that wrong group of girls, that wrong group of guys, or whoever it is, cousins, aunts, uncles, whoever it is, you can have the most beautiful spirit, the most beautiful soul, you can be such a beautiful person, but you get around this other group of people, or you get around this other group of company and your character changes it it shapes it starts to shape and build and plant those seeds within your character um and it's some it's someone that you're not but by you being in the wrong company you are accumulating all those seeds those bad seeds and it's falling on the soil and it's eventually growing into someone who you don't even recognize who you are um yeah, so don't be misled. I don't care if you can say, that's not how I am. You know, this person may be wild. This person may be out in the clubs in the street. This person may be doing this. This person may be a thief. This person may be a gossiper. This person may be a backbiter. Whatever the case, yes, grant it. But at the same time, be careful. Because if you are allowing yourself to be surrounded with that type of energy, those type of vibes, those type of seeds, eventually you're gonna be you're gonna catch on to some of that that mess and it's gonna uh, it's gonna affect you as well so excuse me it's gonna affect you as well so be careful with that um next is luke 6 31 <clears throat> and do to others as you would have them do to you do to others as you would have them do to you so don't work on don't just pray and wish for this friend to come along but work in work at and work on being that type of friend don't just say oh i don't have that type of friend you know so i'm not gonna be that type of friend no you work on being that type of friend you work on type being the type of friend that you wish to have and watch god bless and honor that um as well no matter how this may treat you whatever the case you work on being that person and we allow god to be yours um <clears throat> Proverbs 18, 24, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. We have reliable friends. We need reliable friends who are going to be there when you're down, who's going to be there, you know, to lift, lift you up and encourage you and help you. Granted, you can't depend on them. Your friends are not going to be that that crutch that you can just pop on every time because ultimately God is your source and your number one source that you need to go to is Christ. But at the same time, you need friends who you can call on, friends who you can uh, who can pray for you. Can your friends pray for you? Are your friends willing to pray for you? Do, do, do your friends have a prayer? Like that is important because you need that not only in relationships, but you also need that in friendships. Um, <clears throat> and... Proverbs 11, Proverbs 17, 7, sorry, 17, 7, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. So, even if you're a friend, you and real friendships know how to have a discussion, have a conversation. Uh, either you're going to agree to disagree, but you're still going to come back around to make a conclusion of, you know, I didn't look at it that way. You were right. You know, I didn't see it that way. Now I understand it versus I'm cutting this person off because we got into it. I'm cutting this person off because you're not agreeing with what I'm agreeing with. You're not doing what I'm doing. So you're not my friend. You're fake. You're this. You're that. That's not what friendship is. Friendship is look, you know, I admire you. You're trying to do better with your life. You know, help me get to that next level. Help me to walk the same path that um, I know I should be on. So that's important to you in proverbs 27 and 17 as iron sharpens iron so one person sharpens another iron sharpens iron so one person sharpens another so can your friends sharpen you can your friends sharpen you and i'm not just saying um in a worldly sense of course that is not what i'm saying but can your friends pray with you can your friends um, go to war with you spiritually can your friends help you to uh, stand firm on what the word of god says no matter what your conversation that you have with your friend your conversation should always reroute back to what the word of god is saying it shouldn't take you nowhere else it should take you nowhere further it should ultimately end back on the word of god 
your friend sitting and down. No, pick your head up. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Know your worth. You are a daughter of the Most High King. Are your friends pouring into you and encouraging you and not allowing you to stay down and not allowing you to feel defeated? But are your friends telling you that you are more than a conqueror through, through Jesus Christ who strengthens you? You are more than a conqueror. Are your friends telling you that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you? All things. Are your friends telling you, no, be still and know that God is God? Are your friends telling you, no, God's word is the truth, is the way? <laughs> Jesus is your savior. That man isn't your savior. That man is not um, your source. Jesus is. Is your friends correcting you or are they allowing you to um, stay in your pity party? Like, you don't need, we don't need friends. Well, I'm going to say we, we, none of us, we don't need friends who allows us uh, and helps us stay in our pity party. Those are not the type of friends you need, you know. And as I said before, your friends are supposed to edify you as well as you're supposed to edify your friends this is not a one-way street this is a two-way street this is a relationship as well as a relationship this friendship is a relationship and it has to take the same amount of work as any other type of relationship so you want a good relationship and a good friendship you work on being the best friendship that the best friend that you can be as well um and trust and know that god will bless you and honor that um and bless you with a friendship that you know you deserve so you're being mean you're being rude you're going to get that type of friendship back you know you plant seeds that are edifying to others and not tearing others down are you compassionate are you genuine are you loving and which ultimately all falls back to your vertical relationship with god because like i say if your vertical relationship with god is off and shaky and bitter and you know there's some some walls up there some hindrances there then guess what your relationships around you those your friends your family those around you are going to be affected because you can't get it right. You can't get it right here, so you're not going to get it right there at all. It's just no way that you're going to be able to get it right there if you can't if you can't get it right correctly here. Um, so once again, I wanted to just leave that off on that, and I want y'all to remember this: a friend who tells you the truth in love is better than a friend who tells you a lie out of fear. A friend who tells you the truth in love is better than a friend who tells you a lie out of fear. You don't need people around you who's going to tell you what you want to hear. You need people around who's going to tell you what you need to hear. Because you, there's no opportunity to grow with a lie. There's opportunity always to grow with the truth. But with a lie, you can't grow. Truth, you grow. Lies, you can't. So pick your friends wisely. Choose your friends wisely. And first get your, vert your vertical relationship right with God. So then when God brings that friendship around, God brings that person around, you're able to edify that other person and be a good person and good friend as well as what as they are able to do for you so thank y'all for watching and i will see y'all soon later <laughs>